Hi everyone, it's Paul Bertarelli reporting from AirVenture 2017. I'm with uh, Russ Niles, Editor-in-Chief of AvWeb. This is our annual golf cart preview uh, of AirVenture, except it's not really annual because on account of last year I broke my leg and the year before that it rained and the year before that we just kind of forgot. But we're on it now and it promises to be a pretty interesting show based on what we've heard and seen so far. So let's get cracking. If there's a theme here at AirVenture year, it may be a repeat of one we've seen before. And that's new avionics, and not just any new avionics, but new autopilots. Two from Garmin, one each from Trio and TrueTrack, and one from Bendix King, and a new one from Genesis. We'll have more detailed reporting on these later in the week. That's not to say EAA didn't plan an overall show focus, and this year it's sort of bookended space exploration. Here in Boeing Square, Blue Origin has an example of its new Shepard booster system and also a mock-up of its crew capsule with a simulator to show how it works. Later in the week, AirVenture will commemorate the 50th anniversary of the initial Apollo program with an appearance by Apollo-era astronauts. Continuing on the historical theme, the recently restored B-29 dock will appear at AirVenture for the first time. And another first, multiple B-29s will be on display when both Fifi and Doc will appear on the ramp and they'll be doing some formation flying as well. And for a lucky few, Fifi will be offering rides out of Appleton Airport throughout the week. And actually, AirVenture this year is going to be lousy with big bombers. Also doing a flyby together will be the B-1, the B-2, and the B-52. The Bone and the Stratofort will be on static display as well. Look for a B-52 video later in the week. On Wednesday, at least a dozen B-25s will do a flyby to commemorate the 1942 Doolittle Raid. As you probably know, Scale Composites, the Skunk Works company that Burt Rutan started in 1984, is also in the space business. This year they're returning to Boeing Square with the high-altitude Proteus aircraft, and they have an extensive schedule of forums throughout the week. AirVenture is a popular venue for introducing new power plant designs, and although we rarely see anything major, Two companies are showing incremental developments. We've seen Wisconsin-based engineered power system here before, and now they're back with an updated version of their high-output V8 diesel engine, which they call the Graphlite. This is a dedicated aero diesel rather than an automotive conversion. Look elsewhere on the AV website for a video on this engine. Continental Motors has also jumped into diesel with both feet. They promised multiple major product announcements at AirVenture this year, and we're guessing here they, we, we would say one of them might be a new uh, electronic ignition system for co Continental Piston engines. And further on the subject of diesel, Cessna is finally out with its diesel-powered JTA. As you probably know, this airplane uses the Continental 155 horsepower turbo diesel, and Cessna has really been working on this for about 10 years. Remember, it was introduced at, in 2007, and because of problems with the then Teelert engines, they withdrew the project, and now they revitalized it, and they say it's ready to start shipping. One development we don't have to guess about is this one. This is a Dynon Skyview installed in, wait, is that a Cessna 172? It is. Dynon has announced it, that it has approvals to install the heretofore experimental-only system in certified aircraft beginning with the Skyhawk. This is a full up glass system for under 20 grand. More on this later in the week too. It's a significant development. ADSB gadgets continue to proliferate. Among the Torna products, Garmin is introducing a bargain price ADSB out product called the GDL82. For $17.95, it satisfies the 2020 ADSB mandate and it's designed to work with popular Mode C transponders. So it's an easy install. Garmin has yet another new portable and it combines ADS-B with Sirius XM weather and you can see that on display here at the show too. Electric aircraft are making sporadic uh, appearances at AirVenture too. It's not like we can buy one off the shelf. Two are appearing here at AirVenture that we know of. One is obviously a recreational aircraft. It's from Silicon Valley startup uh, Kitty Hawk. If it looks like a human sized drone, that's pretty much what it is. For the flight training market, Aeroelectric Aircraft is still working on its airplane, the Sunflyer, with a claimed operating cost of $16 an hour. The Sunflyer will be aimed at the training market, and more on that later too. We'll be at AirVenture all week, and if you see the AvWeb golf cart, stop by and say hello. And if we've got an empty seat, we'll give you a ride. This has been Russ Niles with Paul Bertarelli, reporting for AvWeb from AirVenture Oshkosh 2017. See you at AirVenture.